Okay, if y'all will, we'll stand and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, if somebody make a motion to approve our agenda, please. So moved. Thank you. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Sandra. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Hearing none. Uh, any announcements? None. Okay. Any public comment? Nobody signed up. Nobody here. All right. Approval of the consent agenda, please. Make a motion on approval of consent. Thank you, Randy. Second. I second the motion. Thank you, Jill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. All right. To our regular agenda when staff gets caught up. Preservation Steering Committee. All right. Good evening, Council. Um, the first item on your regular agenda tonight is the preservation land preservation committee. And you uh, will probably recall from your last meeting, Councilman Austin um, uh, suggested we create a committee to develop rules and regulations associated with, with land preservation, farmland preservation. Um, so we have put together for you um, a staff report just outlining that discussion essentially. And the recommendation is to create that committee. And Randy, stop me if I if I go too far here, but I believe the purpose of this committee is going to be to establish the, the policies, the rules, the qualifying criteria, um, the characteristics of the properties that would qualify for conservation or preservation. And then that information would come back to the council for approval. And then that would be what the town uses to then move forward with with any sort of conservation efforts. If I summarize that's that the way I fairly. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the committee I was thinking would just hash down all the mm -hmm. little details and mm -hmm. questions that could be asked about mm -hmm. other members of the committee. That's that's where I'm at on. Right. So um the discussion for council this evening is if you're supportive of this, you need to uh, take action to create the committee and then uh, decide who is going to serve on that committee. And the recommendation from uh, Councilman Austin in the last meeting was two council members, two members of the Ag Advisory Committee, two planning board members, and one member at large. Um, so the question that I would uh, pose to the board before you take any action on this, if you so choose, is to specify whether or not the council wants to wants to appoint the board members or the, excuse me the committee members from the respective boards or do you want those boards to appoint their own two representatives to that committee um, it's it's a little detailed but it's 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 entirely up to the board and then if there is a suggestion for a member at large um, that would be good to have where we can we can bring this back at a later date um, and then just in thinking about this conversation the thought of maybe appointing someone from the um, Parks, Trails, and Recreation Advisory Committee has come up because there is some information. In fact, one of the projects in the Parks and Recreation Master Plan is an agricultural park of sorts that would serve as an educational ground for people who are interested in learning about agriculture, um, uh, how that works, a place where they could come visit. So it's, an, it's another thought. Um, so I'll. <clears throat> put the ball back in your court council and, and let you give us direction on how you want to proceed. I would like to see the committee, whatever size it is, stay at an odd number just to keep for voting purposes. Mm -hmm. What you think, Randy? I know you got some ideas. No, I mean, Daniel pretty much lays it out how I envision it working. I mean, uh, I think uh, letting the 
planning board or ag advisory committee for strong members would be a good idea also. I'm just one vote or one voice here. Any give us some discussion, y'all. What y'all thinking? I'll echo Randy's sentiments that I'd like the respective committees to decide who they want to represent on that particular committee. Okay. Y'all okay with the parks having a member? Uh, I still like the odd number that you referred to. There you go. If we if we add them, that puts us at six, right? So we might need a second at large, possibly. Is that right? Or am I thinking wrong? It, it puts you at eight. Eight. Okay. With with the parks member. Okay. Three, four, six, seven. Yeah. And it's just acting as an advisory mm -hmm. committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would it would be a subcommittee of the council? Is that a fair statement? Okay, and it would serve <coughs> serve a specific purpose, and once that purpose is served, it would be disbanded. Oh, okay. So it may not stay in place to cipher through different parcels of land that might come available at the same time. What was the first part of your question? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my speech is the. Would we not need this committee to possibly grade properties that might come in together and to pick and choose, or how are we going to do that? Well, I'll, I'll start, Randy. If you want okay, to go ahead. What, what I, in conversation with Randy, what I think the purpose of this committee would be is to lay out all of the rules, including okay. whether or not a committee should be set up to okay. grade each application. Perfect. Is that is that yeah. accurate? So. Since we've met last, James and I attended a brewery at Sales. And the lady from that runs the program in Buckham County gave a speech, mm -hmm. a, pro, a presentation. Okay. And the way, James, correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I understood her talking is they had a grading system that they went by. It was she made it sound like it's pretty effortless for them to grade a project to see whether it met their guidelines or not. Okay, is that right? Yes, sir. So, and I know like municipalities are always stealing with each other's ideals and everything. So, you know, if we could start out with with what their guidelines look like, mm -hmm. you know, I think would be a, would be a tremendous help. It'll probably help us get a, this done quicker rather than what you're talking about. Bunk, you're talking about, excuse me, you are talking about Buncombe County's program? Yes. Okay. And I have her contact number. Okay. Are they doing theirs 100% in house now? They are. Okay. And so, James, you correct me if I'm wrong, if I remember the numbers right. So the county commissioners decided to fund it at $750,000 last year and this year. Now they've given them permission to uh, do a bond, hmm. a $30 million bond. So they're going to come in with some big money for their presentation. Okay. It did. They, they seem to start out small. It did. I mean, definitely, it did. took a while to get it going, but it's they they. I think they're headed on the head pretty good. I mean, it was well, seven or eight years before they had their first project closed. Oh, mm -hmm. so it's been that long. Yeah. Okay. So their rules were strict. Yeah. I mean. Okay. She made no bones about saying it, it was. She laid it out pretty yeah. well. It was definitely not for everybody. Okay. <clears throat> How big is too big of a committee? How many are on the ad committee? Nine, nine folks. That's uh, yeah, seven's the highest we have, but there's no hard and fast rule. I mean, I'm on a nonprofit board with 20 people on it, so yeah, you don't want to get too big or you won't be able to get anything done. Uh, do we see them having to vote on this at all? 
I guess I mean that's amongst the ourselves. I mean, just to kind of figure out which way they're headed. I think that would be that would be helpful if you if maybe one of them would maybe the council member on the committee might serve as the chair of the committee. Okay. And then um, run it as a as a subcommittee of the board, just like we would planning board board of adjustment, something like that. Okay. But again, it would be a temporary nature, and uh, they're not making the decisions. They simply put together the the guidelines that would come back to the full council recommendation. Sure. Right. All right. How are they going to go out picking the at large member? Put that back to the board. I would say application. Suggestion. Kind of like to get it going pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think we could put it out for application. If anybody knows anybody interested, you know, or you're wanting them on there, you know. You know, try to get them to come on in, get that application filled. Maybe put the application out for what, 30 days or so, if that. Or do you want to wait that long? What day of the week? It's up to all of them. Oh, miss a few mm -hmm. meetings. Might be hard to get them all there in the summer. The third. I'm thinking you can third squeeze third. one or two in April, May. I don't think it takes tremendous. Okay. A lot of time, but especially if we get. Some good guidelines. Some guidelines. Somebody's already been down the road. Oh, okay. So just just as a suggestion, the ag advisory committee's next regular meeting is April twenty first. Um, so if you wanted them to appoint, I'm, 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 they might be open to doing a special call meeting before then. But what I, where I was going with that is maybe you could have the application period end that week, and then your next regular meeting would be on the twenty seventh of April. To appoint that at-large member. I'm okay with that. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Would the at-large member have to be a resident of the town, or are we just looking for somebody with interest and in maybe skill set? Or that's entirely up to you. There, and um, there are representatives on the ag committee who are not residents, but they of course on property here. Do it means it's entirely up to the board. Mm -hmm. Whatever y'all's desire. I think it would be good to have somebody from the town. Keep them all from the town? Yeah. Okay. Andy, where are you at with that? We'll get to that one. Um, you know, there's lots of farmers in the town. And there's the county. And we're all good guys there. I mean, anybody that we can take in that might have knowledge or experience or something like this, I don't think we should necessarily rule them out. If this is just a advisory position, then it's only temporary. Also, with it being an advisory committee, would it be smart to have somebody from like Conserving Carolina or something like that on this committee or no? After hearing that one. Well, I don't know. I'll let Daniel, what do you think? I don't know. Uh, I think there's benefit in in looking outside the town if you want someone with a well, let me just let me rephrase that. There are other groups like maybe Jeff, maybe someone from Department of Ag or the Ag Extension folks, maybe someone like that just throwing out some ideas. Um, but I don't think you necessarily have to stay within the town for for this committee. But well, and I envision a resource person like that, whether they come from state government or from a nonprofit, but uh, be a resource, not necessarily be a member of the committee that maybe that right. first meeting or first couple of meetings they could invite or at least enlist the services of of people that are knowledgeable of these things that can help sure. provide um, information and serve as a resource, but not be a sitting member. You know, but if we do find somebody that's either been through the process here or elsewhere, or as uh, Councilman Austin said, you know, I, I would welcome even if they're outside the town limits. James, where are you at? Whoever. Whoever. Um, okay. We need to put We've done it before. So we'll, mm -hmm. <laughs> you probably need this in a motion. Mm -hmm. Someone make us a motion to accept applications for this committee 
through five o'clock on April the twenty first. Go ahead, Susan. I suggest that you make the motion to create the committee and okay. accept the application. Absolutely. Um I'm sure somebody can word it a whole lot better than I can. Yeah. Like two separate ways or like you can tie it together. I think one on one. one. Uh, two separate ones would be the cleanest for the record. I'll make a motion that we start a committee, a land preservation or farm preservation uh, committee. Alan Nelson. Second. I'll second. Thank you, James. All in favor? All right. Yeah. Any discussion? Oh, any opposed? Okay. None. All right. In this motion, do we need it to state that we would be accepting uh, applications from people outside the town? Out of or do we want to? And you could do that. You could just. Even say any interested party. There you go. Uh, or something like that. Are you going with three? Are you going with? Uh, yeah, we probably need to say in this how big this committee is going to be in this motion, or should we do it in the other motion? Um, if you're willing to go back and amend the last motion, it might be good to it might be good to establish the committee members, the numbers, like the planning board. So let's have a little discussion. Are y'all okay with two from council, two from? And one at large, and then you want one at large, or you want three at large? You could. I'm not the number. <clears throat> Jeff, the people that you're talking about, is it somebody that they could request them to come and speak in front of them to get information, so they yeah. wouldn't necessarily have to be a committee member? You know, I, I I wouldn't want to limit ourselves to trying to find somebody that has both the knowledge and the willingness yes. to serve on the committee. If mm -hmm. we can just find somebody to show up for an hour during one of these committee meetings to okay. either give a presentation or just be a go-to resource okay. during their discussion. Okay. And are we including a Parks and Rec committee oh, person on this? You know, the one of those and two at large. Is that what you're saying? So that's nine. That's the mm -hmm. nine. I think it's five. Um, two up. What the parks committee is one. I'm just thinking out loud. I think like Karen Rowe from Conserving Carolina would be way more apt to come and give and talk than be a member. Mm -hmm. So I think we maybe need to be a little bit careful as how many at large. I don't know that we're going to get that many. So, so that's seven, eight, or, uh, eight or nine. Well, and we we may not get rid of the parts. Okay. So I'd say eight or nine. They'll figure it out. Eight, nine. Eight or nine. So you don't care. I don't. You care? Mm -mm. Eight, I'm fine with eight. Amend your motion. Make it nine. Make it nine. Yeah. Nobody cares. Make it nine. Now, man, they'll show up or they won't. Are y'all okay with it? Make up for the tag. I am, yes. Everybody okay? Yeah. Okay. So I'd like to amend my last motion soon for the uh, online preservation committee to. The breakdown being two council members, two planning board members, two tag advisory members, one parks committee member, two at large. Are you okay with his amended, James? Yes. So we got a first, a second. Any discussion before we move on? Okay. All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none.
So now you need us to, we needed one more section here. I think if you need to, if you're will, if you're ready to decide amongst yourselves who you want to appoint to the committee, you can do that. Okay. Um, I don't think you need to put in a motion the application deadline and then we'll, okay. we'll just, if council's on board with April 21st, we'll just use that. But if you're if you're if you're ready to decide amongst yourselves who you want to appoint to the board, you can do that, or you can wait till you get your applications in from the at-large committee and do it all at one meeting. Okay. We'll do that. Wait till the meeting we'll, April. Okay. Twenty seventh. We'll look at. Well, okay. we got on twenty seventh. <clears throat> Any more discussion on this before we move on? Hearing none. <clears throat> ARPA update when y'all get ready. You good, sir? You good? Uh, so this item on your agenda, uh, Council, is uh, an update to the American Rescue Plan funding uh, project that we've been working on the last couple of months with nonprofits. Uh, just as a quick reminder, we advertised for the uh, request for proposals for non qualifying nonprofits from the community back in February. Last week, we held um, an optional pre submittal meeting, we called it, which was an opportunity for anyone who was interested to come and ask questions. And we had six people show up to that, excuse me, five people um, representing five or six organizations. Um, one of them was representing uh, a couple, I believe. Um, we have not received any applications to date, but I don't, that's not unexpected. It's not due till April 3rd, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect them until maybe next week. Um, project ideas ranged from um, purchase of equipment, uh, helping with preservation efforts. Um, we don't know exactly what all the applications are going to be, but I just wanted to give you that update. Um, one thing I, I am going to ask of you all is to um, decide amongst yourselves, uh, preferably two people, who would sit on a selection committee. So we are going to have a meeting on April 6th to review the applications. And that committee will review the applications against the criteria in the RFP, and then make a recommendation to the full council uh, the following week. Um, that is all that I have, unless there are questions. Do we know what day of the week the 6th falls on? It's a Thursday. Thursday. We don't have a time set. I thought it would make okay. sense to decide who's going to serve on it before we set the time. Anyone interested in serving on that committee? Um, uh, we can get that out of the way tonight and he'll know who he's got or. If you're wondering about the commitment, well, applications are due on Monday the 3rd. So by the end of the day, Tuesday, we'll have copies made of all the applications and we'll email it out to the selection committee with the scoring criteria. So you'd have all day Wednesday to look at it and then come to the meeting on Thursday and and make uh, recommendations based on the, the, the scores of the applications. So it's a quick turnaround um, and then it'll come back to the full board for consideration. Mm -hmm. Any takers? We don't think about it. I'll look at it. Okay. Anybody else? I'm willing to serve okay. to review those if no one else has a okay. special interest in it. Do you need that in a motion, please? Someone, uh, Randy or James, make that motion for me, please. Make the motion. We appoint Sandra and Jeff to the committee. Okay, I got a first. How about a second? Second. Thank you, Randy. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. Staff updates when y'all get caught up. Um, just an update that I met with someone from Land of Sky today. Um, we're we're doing preliminary work on our annual ARPA funding and reporting. Um, and it looks like we are still on track. Probably be April of 2024 before we have all our funds placed 
So that's well ahead of our December deadline to have to it. Awesome. Okay, Parks and Rec. Uh, just real quick reminder for everyone, Brunch with the Bunny, April 1st. Make sure you come sign up, check it out. It's going to be really fun. Um, and then uh, Mills River Day, May 6th. Um, other than that, I know everyone's asking about the dog park grass, and I promise it'll be soon, but we're not ready to put a date quite on there yet. We're going to okay. see what the, if this weather stays spring or if we're going to well. slide back into winter pretty soon. But, um, yeah, I know everybody's eager to get that grass back open, and it's coming. Okay, good deal. Uh, I think Daniel's going to speak in behalf yes, of Michael tonight. Yeah, a few updates from the planning department. Um, we issued a zoning permit this week for a new Verizon wireless communications equipment on an existing tower um, that's at the northern end of town, 2476 Brevard Road. Uh, we issued the zoning permit to construct the fourth commercial building at the Hills Machinery site um, on Old Haywood Road. And that's about 10 and a half thousand square feet. Uh, completed the final zoning inspection and issued the final CO for the Hardy Outpatient Surgery Center. Uh, they had they had they had a temporary CEO and, and today we issued the final one. We don't know yet uh, when they're moving in and when they're going to open, but we have issued that that final step in the process. SmartGov continues to uh, be improved, and um, online payments are coming in through the portal. Troubleshooting in the last several small fixes with the consultants going on, and we expect to have everything resolved in the next couple of weeks. And then lastly, the Mills River townhomes on Jeffers Road, uh, they're doing a big fill, dirt, a fill operation right now. I'm sure you've seen. Um, they have been pretty good about uh, tracking dirt onto the roads, but if you see anything, uh, just give us a call. Mike has a direct contact with the, with the developer, and they're very responsive about getting things cleaned up. Okay. Um, that's all I have for updates, unless there are any questions about anything for uh, any planning. Questions? Any questions? We'll move on to yours. Uh, lastly, just the quick updates here. I wanted to give the council an update on Highway 191 out here. That project is scheduled to let in July of 2024. Um, for those of you who are, have not been through this before, the let date is when they hope is when they open bids. And typically, they open the bids, they review everything, make sure everything's in order, and then the contractor, the lowest qualified bidder, has 45 to 60 days to get all their paperwork in order with bonding and such and then construction will begin after that. So I wouldn't expect to see anything until the very end of calendar year 2024 or early 2025. There has been some work going on there right now. I'm sure you've seen that's um, the state has been doing some clearing. Um, the rest of the work that's going on are utility locate, relocates for uh, telecommunications companies and Duke, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that work is ongoing and you'll see that in little, um, little bits for the next couple of years until the actual highway project starts. And that will be a several years worth of construction once once that kicks off. And then just a reminder, we have the closed session after your regular meeting and um, I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions for Daniel? The start date of that was when? Oh. The let date for the highway project is July of 2024. That's when we'll be opening bids. Okay, any more questions for Daniel? Have you had an opportunity to reach out to the Department of Transportation regarding Hooper Lane and yes, the I approach? Yes, I spoke with them last week about that, and I've not prepared a graphic yet. My my intention was to prepare a map that you all could review, and basically, um, if we were to uh, donate the land to have the road paved, the right-of-way where it exists right now on, on the park side of the property would be the new edge of the right-of-way and you'd measure in from there into the park to get probably 50 feet of right of way. So that's <clears throat> that's what we've determined in terms of its location, but I have not presented, prepared anything to present to you all yet, but you'll have that early next week. And then I spoke with the assistant district engineer and he's ready to meet whenever, whenever we're ready to have that conversation. Okay. Okay, any more questions? Council comment? Have you heard anything about when they're going to get the knot lots fixed? I have not. I'm sorry. I will follow up on that. And what do you want to do if you want to report a pothole and you don't know the address? 
there is an online reporting tool that um, you can report the nearest address, um, or you can just call one of us here and we can handle it through the online system. Okay. That's the most efficient way to do it. They're very responsive in Henderson County. Okay. Any other council comments? You know, if uh, someone would put us in closed session, please. Mayor Gantz, I move that we enter into closed session pursuant to the appropriate statute. Second. Second. I'll second. Thank you, James. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. We're in closed session.